Hey, people, it's Monday. I think I've actually gotten all the links posted and managed to uh, remember to turn my YouTube feed off for the first time tonight. So hope everybody had a good weekend and uh, we can have a get together and talk about a few things tonight, talking about anything aero modeling or whatever else you want to talk about. Notice we've been getting a few people who are finding us on search engines while they're um, just browsing YouTube. And so that's pretty cool. We got a, an RC guy in here the other night who watched us for a pretty good while, I think. And uh, so more and more people dropping in and out. And um, I think our total viewers, whether they actually join the chats or uh, increasing in number. So that's good. Um, but uh, anybody that wants to join up with us tonight, I posted the link uh, uh, in the YouTube, in the Stunt Hanger YouTube channel uh, at the top of the chat box next to this video. And I also posted it in the At The Bench forum in Stunt Hanger, which uh, is uh, called Friday Night um, Live Chat or Live Video hosted by Rusty. So. Anyway, welcome to come on in. I see we got a couple of viewers already. I was um, looking at one thread that's been interesting on Stunt Hanger today, and it's uh, one of my buddies actually. Um, he calls himself, I don't know if it's pound or hashtag the symbol, but uh, we'll call it hashtag liner. And uh, his signature is Chris, and I happen to know that's his uh, name. And uh, Chris is having trouble with the runaway FP40. And um, so, of course, everybody's been throwing information at him uh, like fastballs left and right. Randy came in today and pretty much put his foot down, told him what he really needed to do and what he probably shouldn't do um, and what he insisted for him to not do. Um, but, uh, yeah, FP40 is a uh, hard one sometimes. And, um, they uh, will run if a 4-2 break if you want it to or just a straight wet two, which is the way I prefer to run them. But Chris is, is uh, starting off at a 4-2 and then, and then uh, starting to get hot apparently and run lean and run away and, and move too fast for the second half of his pattern. So um, we were one of the last questions was uh, that Randy addressed was to check the crankshaft and make sure it's absolutely straight. And um, so Chris asked the question, how do you do that? Um, nobody had answered by the time I found it. And um, I didn't know, I'm not a machinist, but I've watched machinists at work before and I would have guessed that you would chuck it in a uh, precision milling machine or lathe or something like that uh, that's as absolute straight as you can get and then um, put some sort of a gauge up to it and rotate it around by hand and see how much out of line the shaft is as you turn it around and then uh, Chris posted back a picture that was similar to that. In fact, let me get that. I can hop over here and get that thread. I'm copying the URL now, and uh, I'll post it over there so you guys that are watching this can, can see it. Let's see if I can get back to my YouTube. There we go. Okay. I'm posting it on the YouTube page now where this video is streaming. So there's two links there. One of them is uh, the Hangouts and how to get into where I'm sitting here talking. And the other one is the link to get into the uh, Stunhanger thread that I was just talking about, about checking the, uh, checking the straightness of a crankshaft on FP40. And I mentioned in my reply to the thread that we had a machinist that frequents our hangouts, and that's Chris, uh, who comes in a lot of nights. And uh, 
Uh, so he can probably give us some more details on how he would do something like that. And I don't know. The reason I got interested in this is because um, machinists and the things that they do are something that I regret not having learned along the way. I think I would have really enjoyed it. And because of everything about it, I find fascinating. I watch machinists on YouTube. And um, and so uh, maybe I'm living vicariously through those guys. It's the best I can do right now. I got a belt sander and a jar full of files. <laughs> I'll do the best I can with those until until I turn into a machinist when I grow up. But anyway, we got four viewers. If y'all want to join, um, there. If you're if you're subscribed to the Stunt Hanger um, YouTube feed, then you've got a notification up at the top right of your YouTube page that will give you the URL to come in here with me. And also in Stunt Hanger, in the forum called At the Bench, uh, there's a new thread stating tonight's uh, Monday Night Live feed. So you can get in here by kicking either, uh, clicking either ones. Charles Williams, good evening from Northwest Indiana. And Charles has joined us on YouTube. So, uh, uh, Charles, do you have uh, set up with a camera and uh, mic where you can sign in here? Uh, maybe I can help you. Uh, uh, come in and visit with us because I don't I don't believe we've had you visit us live before but uh, uh, if you'll let me know and I'm going to type you a message here that says hi Charles there you go here's an official hi Charles from Northwest Indiana so if you'd like to join us um, if you've got the equipment and you've got a Google account like Gmail uh, if you're signed into Google and you've got a YouTube account, they're one in the same. So one password gets you into both. Then um, probably you can click on that link I posted right up at the top right corner next to the uh, video window in YouTube and come in here uh, to where the live stream is. And if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. I think a lot of people like to just watch from the background. Um, and uh, I said, okay, on a cell phone. Yeah, we do have some guys that participate on a cell phone. Um, sometimes it works out. And sometimes it doesn't. It depends on your, uh, uh, you know, how, how well your broadband connection is. Um, some guys do it pretty successfully. Uh, but I had, when I tried it, I tried taking my cell phone out to my shop so I could show what I was working on one night. I was building a wing on my table, so I propped everything up and, so I went out there with about a 40% battery and figured I'd just plug it in, but it, it sucked it down faster than I could pour it and pour the electrons back in. It, it just wouldn't hold up to it. So I learned my lesson. I'm 100, 150 feet from the Wi-Fi out there, so it was probably working too hard trying to uh, keep up with the Wi-Fi. Maybe if I could get a, 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 a LAN cable out there and and uh, plug into it I might be able to have a little bit um, more success I'd really rather do this for my shop because um, it's called at the bench that's what Sparky named it Sparky the uh, proprietor of stunt hanger and uh, the force behind this uh, our ability to do this video chat and uh, and and he always signs on from his shop and can show us a lot of things about building control line planes or just general modeling um, that I can't show you sitting here in my uh, desk chair. Um, and uh, so, you know, it'd be nice to get out there. I've got a tablet that I smashed about six months after I bought it. It's LG and I've got a new glass. It's the LED glass for it. It's sitting on the table back in my shop. If I can manage to peel a million shards of glass off the face of it and glue the new LED screen down if that's even possible then I might try it again see if I can get that tablet to work out there um, still got the Wi-Fi problem but I think um, I could get a repeater to put in the window I'm sitting there's a brick wall between me and the workshop and 150 feet right now 10 feet to my right is a window 
that I could put a repeater in that might, uh, or a booster, whatever you call it, and, and that might get me um, more battery usage in the shop, plus the uh, uh, um, battery and uh, the battery and the little the little tablet is about the size of a uh, about the size of a, a CD package, so it'll hold way more than a cell phone. Well, as far as amp hours goes, or milliamp hours, whatever they want to call it, it's all the same stuff. So, some of you guys feel free to drop in, and um, I don't know, Mondays are usually pretty good. We dropped the Wednesday broadcast because it was getting a little bit slow, but Fridays have been extremely entertaining. Oh, hey, Steve, how you doing? doing I've been pretty good. How about you? Pretty good. I've been seeing your post uh, about, I think that's you. You're Steve uh, Shoniker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I've been, I've started reading your posts in uh, the forums about your little uh, speed planes. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So those are pretty interesting. That's a topic I don't know much about, but we do have a couple of uh, uh, speed enthusiasts in our Huntersville club. So, uh, so, but those are those are pretty cool little planes. So, what you been doing this week? Did you get any? I tried to run with the turkey Saturday afternoon, and it won't run. So I don't, I'm going to have to pull the engine out and stick it on the bench and run it. I What's think that? I got it issue with the tank uh is that a rossi or what what kind of engine have you got in super tiger oh okay the one with the rear intake yeah that's right i remember we talked about that rear intake engine okay it'll run out the when i prime it it'll run that out but it won't but it won't pull gas out of the tank nope um now you've got back plate pressure or something going to it or exhaust you can't run pressure. pressure. You you can't run pressure in the perk. Oh, it's not allowed. No. Okay. What if you tipped it nose down so you gravity feed fuel once the prime starts burning, then tip it nose down? We tried that and it still didn't pull it. Still, still I tried taking my fuel bulb and squeezing it in the uh I made it a unifo tank by squeezing it in the vent. Yeah. Until I could see the fuel come up in the fuel line all the way up to the, you know, needle valve and then start it, but it still wouldn't suck it. You'd think with a solid stream it would flow. Maybe um um I know some guys not in speed necessarily, but um with fuel feed problems have tried putting a wider inside diameter fuel line on it. And seeing if it flowed any better, pulled any better that way, with a little less resistance. You'd have to wire it maybe to the nipples, because a you know wider ID fuel line might not want to hang onto the nipple. Yeah. Or either that, or maybe there's a. I mean, there's always a possibility of a leak somewhere. I'm guessing you checked everything. I did. I stuck it underwater before I put it in there. Yeah. So I'm what gonna run inventory um, gaskets and all that. You've been been through all that. Yep. Dang. Is it a metal? Is, is it a, a metal tank? Yes. I made it out of uh, just tin stock. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know. I'll hang on and watch your threads and uh, see what you get in between in between video chats. Yeah. I hope I don't have to cut the tank out. Uh, I thought about making a hatch, but I didn't do it. So it's sealed up in there pretty tight, huh? Oh, yeah. Um, I, could, I could chop it out, you know, chop the bottom, the bottom sheeting off and get to it. Yeah. Don't really want to do that. But might have to. Yeah, it's only so. There's only so many things you can rule out without getting in there to it. There just wasn't room with that rear intake engine to put the fuel tank in front of the firewall. So it's yeah. back behind the firewall under the engine mount. 
So that's a long way. Let's see. We got somebody called uh, the Commander in Chief. Hello from Brazil. Hey, right. Commander. Welcome. This is over on YouTube. Um, he's a okay. He's a RC flyer. That's cool. We talk about aero modeling. We're mostly a control line uh, uh, community chief, but uh, we talk about any kind of modeling, especially building. That's what we uh, try to stick to mostly around here. But uh, we're good to talk about anything. Do you, uh, chief? Do you have a setup with a camera and a mic? and uh, a Google account so you can join us. If you do, the link is up at the very top of this uh, little chat screen. Kenneth Colbert just showed up. Hey, Kenneth, good to see you. So we got some watchers coming in on YouTube at least. Maybe some of y'all can figure out how to get in. How's it going, Keith? Yeah, I hope you, everybody had a good weekend. We uh, didn't do a whole lot. We just kind of chilled out this weekend. Hmm, okay. Well, maybe Sparky will drop in on us and uh, and uh, hit us with some building information. Just you and me, right, Steve, on the live side. We got a few people coming in over there. We got Charles Williams. We got the Commander in Chief. We got Ken. Colbert. I've been reading that thread about uh, making battery holders, you know, for starting. Yeah, there comes a thread like that about once every year or two. Um, and um, of course, you got a, a lot of people get those Radio Shack ones and wire them in parallel. But I tried one one time and the little chrome plated coil springs wouldn't get a good enough connection with the battery. Um, so soldering, I think, is the option if you can solder it without destroying the connections inside the battery. And that's a problem with some types of batteries. I read somebody said one type of battery, it'll disconnect the connection, internal connection when you heat it up. So I that. Types of batteries one. I don't remember which is which now. I don't know. I just took some regular D cells and and fixed up the ones I made. Let me let me get those the ones I made a long time ago. Yeah, I've I've had several of those. Some of them were as rudimentary as just being wrapped in duct tape and soldered to some heavy duty speaker cord, and um, that worked pretty well because I could use it on my half A's and on my stunters. But now I just carry those pocket glow igniters. Now I'll tell you one thing I learned about the pocket glow igniters. And I don't have one within reach here, but the little sub C ones that I, I use the ones with the spring clip type because they'll fit the Norvell drop in plugs as well as the Cox plugs. Well, you actually have to hold it on to the drop in Cox. I get the drop in Cox plugs, but I replace the batteries that come in them, which is a NICAD 1300 milliamp, mm -hmm. meaning about 20 minutes of lighting time. And I chunk those, I use them in other things, but uh, I go down to the battery store and buy the uh, 4,000 milliamp nickel metal hydride batteries. They're uh, about a half a millimeter wider, so they won't fit into the unscrew type glow igniters. But if you strip the plastic covering off, then you get about an hour and a half of lighting time. That's it. Yeah, let me click on you so I can light you up, Steve. Hold that up again. Okay, yeah. That's a that's a push and turn one there. Yeah, yeah. That's all. That's very. Day, so I had to use my other ones. Yeah. I charged it. Hey Tom. Hey. What Boy, you got you going on tonight? Well, I thought I, th I thought we were going to have to run, run for the basement. We have some tornadoes just go right over us. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, pretty severe right now. Well. It's let up. I think the, the worst part of it's over. It did it did hail a little bit. It was about the size of golf balls. Hours let up too. We had one just uh, before sunset that was uh, uh, pretty heavy with lightning and no hail this time. Friday we had hail in that thunderstorm I mentioned. I was worried it was going to knock me off before uh, we got our chat going, but it ended up going away. 
tonight seems to have faded out to so y'all get some pretty big hail keeping my eye on the tv just to the left just to the left of me <laughs> got your radar going over there so i see you got your you got your official building bathrobe on what you're working on tonight oh oh well probably i was outside my hair's a little wet now it's so cold in here. It's only 71 degrees in my house. And it's just oh, a good box. But you're freezing. Yeah. So, so today, today the robe is, uh, is a winter coat right now. <laughs> well, I finally got the, uh, I think I told y'all Friday, I had gotten the uh, brass insert replaced where I had uh, stripped the T-nut out of the engine mount internal engine mount on my twister and um so i put it all back together and stripped out another damn bolt That's oh, no. <laughs> i've got one more brass insert so i thought well as soon as i put this one in i'm gonna strip another one because they're probably all weak um and they just those aren't good for holding engines in not, you, not have a, a, you have a not, 440 tap to run through them I, well, a 540, because you got to go bigger, it was a 440 T-nut that stripped. So I ran a 540 tap through it. But when the um, 540 bolt started tightening down, and that's an odd size, too. Everybody doesn't have that. Uh, yeah, it started turning the T-nut in. I was just like, ah, this is all I can take. So um, I went ahead and I checked with my local hobby shops, and they didn't have any. Dubro or Great Plains brass inserts. So I ordered a dollar ninety nine pack of them off of eBay stores omnimodels.com today. So I'll have yeah. them a week. I might as well just leave it alone till they come. Maybe I'll start tooling up for the Cardinal build. I'm ready to get started on that. I don't know. You want to hear the flight report on the bastard? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Do tell. Well. Um, I ended up putting it on the Vanessa machine, and uh, <clears throat> because when I first flew it, put two flights on it. Of course, I had a hole in the tank. Got the tank fixed. I took the forty out. I took the forty out and put the forty-six in, and it was actually a tenth of an ounce lighter. The forty-six is a tenth tenth of an ounce lighter than the forty. Yeah, yeah, because they have to drill more uh, drill more steel out to get to the bigger size yep, yep. So that, uh, done away with the tongue muffler put on the uh, uh put on the 762 muffler and um yep i balanced her and oh my land of living dude i got me a winner i think i mean this uh, thing good. this thing is just sweet um now I now I wasn't paying attention and I overlooked one of the trim methods, and that was see I went from ten percent to fifteen percent nitro, and I run a twenty five percent altogether in my in my for my gallon because I run wow. more oil with my OSs. Yeah. Well, I ran out of right when I was at the top of my horizontal weight, I went to the top to go put down to go do the outside loop. As soon as I got up to the top, the motor died. Oh no. I was fuel. So now I was running two and a half ounces for my pattern, which is a beginner pattern. So now it is up to three ounces. So I had to add a half more ounce of fuel for that 5% more nitro. So I learned a lesson. I should have just That's right. two and a half, flew my level laps and see what time I got on fuel. But nope, I was too antsy because it started, it, it flew so well. I just couldn't help myself and I started doing the pattern. <laughs> just like when the weather gets cold and the air gets dense, it's the same with the fuel. If you put more nitro, you bring more oxygen. So you got to make yeah. it. So sit down. I got myself an 11 by four and a half, four and a half pitch, and I'm turning 5.2 laps per second. Hmm. And I could slow it down a little bit more if I wanted, but I like it where it's at. 
I wouldn't slow it down. That's just my opinion. I, um, when the wind blows, I'd rather be used to it moving at four or two than used to it moving at four or five. Is when you yeah. are on up top I, I in the wind. The, I love the five point two lap times. Yeah, I've got the yeah, really tension. And yeah, well, anyway, right at the top of that, it died, right? And I mean, I was scooting. I mean, I was running back as fast as I could go. And at the last second, I took my hand like this and yanked back. And I finally got tension on my lines just enough for the up to go up. And it just went right into the ground, just skidded into the ground. Took the landing gear and folded them all the way back to the tail. <laughs> but that's yeah, all it right. did. It didn't do any other damage. Good, good. And I had a piece of brass tubing all the way through because that wire gear is in half. It's not one complete U. That's right. Same way the twister is. I, uh, well, is it hit so hard. What it did was... Uh, it took and busted the, the tubing inside the fuselage. Holy shit. So Is I it, had to dig all that out, had to fix that, had to put some new tubing in, and I had to redesign uh, the clamping. You know, I was using aluminum, so I had to end up, you know, I had to use steel. So I've got it all back together, and that's what I did today. It was nothing Is but that. that three, three seconds. Why are you using on that gear? Or one eighth. Oh, it's one eighth. Boy, well, you bend that head. back. You really hit it hard. Yeah. I'm it held together. It didn't, it didn't do anything else to the plane. Nothing else to the plane. That's good. So I'm kind of glad that that landing gear was that landing gear was not built for uh, real stout toughness. It was built for real light landings because I usually do all my landings are real light and take off. So I thought, well, I'd save myself some weight. So I'm kind of glad I did it because then when it hit the ground, it it took some of it took the inertia of the impact away a little bit. Yeah, you're flying yeah. over grass, right? Yeah, yeah. But the ground right now, right? It was before this heavy rain that we're getting. Uh, the ground is just uh, like concrete. Yeah. <laughs> we got an interesting comment here. Let's see. Uh, uh, commander in chief says, uh, says I have only, he says, I'm only 53 years old. Don't, uh, uh, don't fail on your high levels. Gentlemen talk about models. So glad to see and hear high experience on the business. I don't know about high experience. I think, uh, Tom's flying the beginner pattern and I just got the boot from intermediate to advanced. And, uh, Steve, you're mostly a uh, speed guy, aren't you? No, I've, I've built that stunt trainer. I'm going to be flying beginner here soon. Ah, great. Okay. And hey. we, do, we do have some experts that come in here. Hey, and, uh, he comments on your cigarette smoking, too. He says, <laughs> well, gentlemen, all smoking. You must be warriors. Uh, great iron health with these ages. I smoke, too. All right, good. We got another smoker in here. This can be the Yeah, smoke. I know it's kind of bad. I want to quit, but. Tom's the only one that wears a smoking jacket. Uh, that's his uh, official building uh, building robe, but it yep. can be a smoking jacket too. Yep. And every now and then, the wife's got to yank it off of me. <laughs> yeah, hey, fiddle uh, I, I, um, yeah, we had, we had someone that was uh, that was going to be rooming with us in the uh, in the hotel at Best Western at the Nats, and Muncie. And something happened, kind of family crisis. He can't go, so we, we we're looking for someone to to help share the cost of our hotel room. And we're gonna be there all week. We're gonna be there the fourteenth on Friday. Uh, get there about four in the afternoon, and we're not planning on leaving until the following Sunday. So if anyone's interested, there's uh, at Stunhanger on open forum, Ricky Bollinger's the one that uh, posted it, that we're looking for someone to share the costs for the hotel. And uh, me, I'll, you know, there's going to be beds in there. So I think it figured up to be like 
40 bucks a night something like that so that's pretty cheap for a hotel for a week 40 bucks a night it might even be 30 bucks a night i don't know ricky bollinger is handling the, the bill there because he gets uh he gets some discount you know and stuff so we always yeah. go with ricky as damn sure more comfortable than camping now i have never yeah. been to the nats but so um, if, there's, if there's someone out there that wants that wants to share and 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 get the cost of the lodging down boy it'd help us out it'd help all of us out if we could get someone to share a room with us okay make that a call out to all our watchers we got eight guys outside of ourselves that are watching right now so maybe somebody will uh, uh I mean, Ricky's had that posted on Stun Hanger. No one's, no one's got a hold of him yet. He's got his phone number on there. Okay, we'll post a Rick yeah. Bollinger's post on Stun Hanger. Yeah, Bollinger, B O L L I N G E R. Isn't he? And it's and it's in the open forums, right? Yeah. Okay. Anybody listening? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna sit here. And and double check it right now since I'm online and just see let's see here boy it's it's hard to get used to this new one isn't it <laughs> the the stun hanger oh I like it though there are some things that uh, you know I've had to kind of fool around with and figure out but um it's working out okay yeah i like i like it too i just posted a new link uh so it doesn't get lost in the fray of the uh live section of the chat if any of you guys over on youtube want to come in and talk with us then i, I just reposted the link to come into the live side yeah the first time i i hit the link i thought it was the link and it led me to a um, a post, a yeah. Picture of a motor that was on a uh, FP40, yeah, is running away. That's uh, that's Chris's uh, um, pound liner, or hashtag liner is what he calls himself. And uh, he was asking a question today that I was interested in. So that's I talked about it uh, when I was waiting for people to sign in with me, and uh, it was about checking to see how uh, uh, if a crankshaft is straight. And um, so I hadn't, you know, I hadn't gone back. It's just too much to go back and check everything. If there's been any answers since we started talking, but Randy Smith got in there and 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 told him some useful information, and uh, and said he had pictures. If he came back, he'd post more about how to check for the true crankshaft, because um, if you're getting vibration, you know that engine will work fine after you launch it and then heat the bearings up and start bogging and uh, uh, or overheating and then run away lean. So I guess it runs away lean first and then bogs when it really gets hot. So I said that backwards, but basically it screws your pattern flying up and your fuel mileage. You'll end up flying for 12 minutes instead of eight minutes and getting dinged by the judges for going overtime by dinged i mean lose your pattern points yeah which is 25 points well i tell you what i'm looking here on open forum and i don't i don't see Ricky's post at all oh no it's uh, oh you don't see rick's post maybe he posted it somewhere else while you're looking, uh, Commander in Chief has a question. He says, uh, Chief says, with the advent of drones, do you think the RC flight restriction laws may have some more severe restrictions in the future in your states? Um, you know what? I don't know because in control line, even though there was a wild scramble, everybody thought they had to get this new FAA number we're not covered by that we're free to fly without an faa number and of course we don't have altitude restrictions and um i don't know 
anything really about RC, except if you're within a certain distance of an airport, you're not supposed to fly over 400 feet. Um, and so, uh, Chief, I can't answer it. I can't answer that. I know there's a lot of people that are really upset about it. I'm more of the ones that just says the hell with it. I fly with a retired FAA crash investigator who is still uh, closely attached to the business and, and still knows all the people and the current laws. And uh, if he says we don't need them, that we never fly in restricted airspace because we're there on the end of our 60 foot lines, um, then it doesn't affect us. So if that's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. And I pretty much ignore any more about it. So I don't know. Maybe now that I'm a, uh, a public personality with his own web TV show, I should be more up on those sort of things. But I'm, I'm neither a debater nor a p political opinionist. So I really don't give a shit. I just go out and <laughs> fly my planes. Hey, you I know? found it. Oh, okay. Is it in some other place besides the open no, forum? It's in uh, uh, it's it's in open forum, and and the title of it is "Open Bed for the Nats." Maybe you can, is it way down the list? It, you can bump it if you you know want to put a little message in there saying that you're still. Yeah. Open. It says, uh, "I have an open bed at the Nats at Best Western." Uh, you know details. Uh, Call Central Time 3:30 after 3:30 p.m. Central Time. Call his number, and he did it again July 6 and said it's still open. Thirty dollars per night, two queen beds. So I think I'll just write a little something in there. That'll knock it up to the top, yeah, right? Bring it up where everybody will see it. It won't get lost. Because, um, let's see, I got my calendar right here. See, the Nats. Uh, the Nats start this coming Saturday. Saturday, yeah, the 15th. Or is it Friday or Saturday? I don't know. But it's, it's the 15th on through, what, the 19th, I guess? Uh, let's see. The calendar's right behind me. Does it end on a Wednesday? No, that would be through the 23rd. Uh, oh, isn't that cute? I got a puppy calendar. <laughs> <laughs> My wife probably gave me that. I'm more fond of these kind of animals. My flounder. Okay. Now let's see if that brings that back up. <clears throat> yep, that brought it up at the top of the list. It says there it's, it's had 317 views. Well, anyway, I'm back now. You can dismiss about half of those as... Uh search crawlers coming through and looking at it and i just got a new updated list and i just got it today and check this out boys and all control line airplane kits what list is that where does that come from um that come from i i go to event up at poke city it's the mid mid iowa control liners and um the one of the uh one of the the founder founding members passed away this winter and um unto, mm. unknown to his wife and and a couple best friends they had no idea he had all these kids He's, he's got like over 200 kits. Holy shit. So I posted a list. I don't know. It was way back in May. You know, <clears throat> we sold 99 of them. 
And um, now this is an updated list, went through everything after the 99 was sold. And so this is a new updated list. I'll be putting it on uh, Stun Hanger and I'll be putting it on Facebook. But it, it's kind of hard because these guys, it, you know, I, there's not going to be no phone number. It's all going to be handled under email. And I know it's rough, but uh, the checks have got to be made out to, um, you know, to the widow, which her name is Ann. Yeah. Checks will be made out there. And there's about an, a there's an average price of about $20 in shipping. The time it, he, he takes it up and gets it, it's already in the box, but he'll wrap it and then take it up and the length and the width and the weight of the box usually is about 20 bucks in shipping. Yeah. Plus it's well, also a pain in the ass to do. Yeah. But, so the check, probably the checks are going to have to be made out. And then you see, he doesn't have PayPal or anything like that. So it makes it difficult. And some of the guys don't like doing it that way, writing a check or writing a money order and then sending it to him and then when he gets it he sends you the plan yeah well there's no way to do it that's going to satisfy everybody the other side of people, crowd doesn't like paypal you know, so. yeah I, I posted it on facebook and um about, uh, uh, about the fourth comment someone said oh man this guy's this guy's a ripoff he's a scam this is a scam and boy i got right back on there and i said hey but this is not no scam, you know. <clears throat> Try to let him know. Well, anyway, he uh, we talked back and forth for a while. Well, he ended up buying two kits, you know. Oh, okay. So, and he apologized. Oh, that's good. You know, but he, you know, some people get knee jerk freaked out responses. Yeah. Right, right. They 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 see these airplane kits and go, oh man. And let me tell you, the good prices. I mean, here's a Brodac full body Cors Corsair kit. Okay, ninety bucks. Okay, if it's still in the wraps, then that's a good deal. Yeah, it is. And there's a Bearcat full body Bro Brodac full body Bearcat. Are these designed for scale competition? Ninety. Or are these designed for uh, stunt? Or well, or most of I mean, there's all kinds. There's stunt, there's combat, there's speed, there's everything here. This guy was into everything. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, there's Sterling kits, top flight kits, uh, Cleveland's, Scientific, Sig, Kodak, back, yeah. Galaxies. There's all kinds of kit makers here. Midwest, there's a Midwest ME 109 Messerschmitt, kit number 238, you know, 50 bucks. That ME 109 makes a great looking model. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, there's a super clown. A lot of people like some super clowns, you know, 45 bucks for that kit. And yeah, there's a half a combat. It's called uh, Doc Denrix. Uh, uh, G E N E R I X. How do you say that? Generic. Yeah, or something like that. A shadow half a combat. I've never, I, I've never seen one of them. Yeah, there's lots of half a combat planes out, but I'll tell you what. You finish flying one of them things. If you ain't got a smile on your face, then something's wrong with you. Those things are flat out fun. Have you ever heard of a? of a, a kit made by Cleveland and the name of the plane is what zit w a yeah. what zit i don't know what it looks like but i have heard of it was it w h a t z i t yeah i've never heard of that and there's a jet tex i never heard of this one either c vixen yeah. c vixen c vixen yeah, there's all there's just all kinds of kits on here. I'll get it posted. I'll wait until tomorrow. I'll get it posted up on uh, on Stun Hanger. Yeah. So, what about your Stuka? What's the status of it? Well, it's it's just it's it needs to be painted. 
I've got it. I've got the primer um, on it. And you kind of back burnered it off. to finish the P40. Is that what what happened? What's that? You kind of back burnered it to go ahead and finish the P40s. Is that what happened? Yeah, I was actually wanting to do both of them at the same time as I had everything out. You know, all yeah. I had to do was just. It's the same type of paint I'm using, and uh, which, by the way, yeah, and I, I, that that paint, it it's it's great right now with that dope over the top of it. I mean, it's not peeling up or anything or coming off, and I'm I'm able to clean it. I'm just so happy. I mean, you know, it only cost me eleven bucks. <laughs> yeah. Is it lacquer? Um. No, I used DC 540 and then I uh, went to Walmart and bought uh, the two ounce bottle of uh, of uh, of uh, acrylic water base. Mm. And then I mixed that with a with a 3608 S and then put a uh, retarder in it. Yeah, 3608 well, S, that's your thinner, I, right? I didn't put the retarder in it because uh, I didn't have it. I didn't have the money to get it. So I had to do what I had to do. And, uh, and, and like I said, you put any kind of tape on it or any kind of adhesive, it'd come off. Yeah. So it wasn't yeah. an adhering to the surface. And what happened was when it come out of the gun and hit the surface, it just dried. It dried way too fast. Where it didn't the have time to cross link and bind with the uh, other layer. Right, but it was so dry that I did all the insignias in the color, and I only put 1.5 ounces of paint on. That was after it dried, and I was ready for clear coat. So it's pretty lightweight paint. But as soon as I put the, the non tontening clear coat dope on it, that dope just sank right into yeah. it and binded with it and then it and then it binded to my surface so right now i've got a, you know i've got a pretty hard surface really well um i've given up on luster coat that's used to be what i sprayed the nose of, of my planes with on top of the butyrate dope to uh, make it as close to 100 percent fuel proof as possible just in front of the wing and um the other day I was uh, putting a temporary okay the other day I was putting a, a, a temporary uh, monocoat fairing over the push rod exit hole on the wing the one that comes out of the wing and goes back to the elevator and uh, when I pulled it up to adjust it I pulled luster coat up and it just started coming off in sheets and I said oh crap so uh, I managed to I managed to uh, get it off of there with as little damage as possible and i'm going to heat it up with some some really thin hot dope and see if it'll mix with it and stick it down like you're talking about yeah um, because I don't, I don't want anything that peels off like that yep now so i did, do a, I I did do a tape test on mine and uh i put it on there and then i took it off real slow like that and it, nothing happened to it. <laughs> Excellent. But, but, I'm going to try the uh, finishing resin. I think you can get it at boat stores, and we've got plenty of those around here. You know, as as uh, there's a comments made made on Stun Hanger, you know, and I got to think, and I had a couple other buddies made some comments. This airplane ain't going to last me no 5, 10, 15, 20 years, you know. Yeah. Need to get by just a couple years, and you know, right now I got everything pretty well stocked up and building, building materials, hardware. The only thing I don't have stocked up is paint. So once I get stocked up on paint, you know, I'll be able to turn out better planes. And yeah. Some people that, talk on the forums about how their stutters got two thousand flights on it. That. I wonder if do you is does anybody even count really count oh, like, they, like that? They're they're at the nationals. I've seen lots of guys that open up a book, and 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 they write everything about the flight. Yeah, 
before they fly it and after they fly it. They in that book. I do That's that a, for trimming. I take notes and not even as detailed as I should, but I sure well, they don't take, log how many flights I've got on it. They'll write down wind speed. They'll write down, you know, the ambient air, humidity. Yeah. Well, if, if you want to meter your fuel and get the prop pitch right for different changing conditions from one yeah. venue to the next, then I guess if you're going to be an expert, you need to know that stuff. Yep. Like at uh, Triple Tree, at the Joan All, uh, uh, our uh, uh, contest was 65 degrees that morning for first round and second ground was uh second round was 95 degrees and so um, wow. i had to defuel three quarters of an ounce out of my tank and i still got the same number of laps after the clover so i'm glad i knew that much to do but uh, i don't go screwing with my prop pitch oh uh, let's see commander in chief says thanks for the hangout great line see you later all right thanks chief from brazil he was coming to us all the way from Brazil. So we'll see you later, dude. Come back and visit us sometime. Good night. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. good. Every time we do this, we get uh, new people showing up. Some of them stumble into it while they're searching YouTube for other things, I believe. So, but I'm, yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad that we're visible. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Besides that luster coat, what have you been spraying for the fuel proof finish? Everything except for the uh, nose, I've been spraying just Brodac butyrate dope. Oh. I, I just lay you were it talking on. about some. Uh, oh, I said something about uh, uh, finishing resin. A well, minute ago. That's a two part system. I, I saw this at the. That loads or something the other day, so I got it. I didn't know it sound. I was thinking maybe that you had mentioned that. Um, I have used that for the base coats when I'm mixing sand and sealer, but it is not in the least bit fuel proof. Oh, it's not okay. No, it's not, and it's heavy. Um, so um, I, I've that was one of the things I tried as I went along, and I I put the base coat on my Yak Nine full of talcum powder to say, uh, fill in the grain and sanded it down. And it worked pretty well for that. But when you spray any of that, um, whether it's water-based or solvent-based uh, uh, um, polyurethane on it, um, it's just as heavy when it lays on and dries as it is when it's in the can. No. With. Yeah, so it doesn't gas off. Heavy. <laughs> yeah. They don't gas off. Whatever you, you weigh the can first to see what the can weighs. And then as you spray a coat on, weigh your can again and see how much you use. That's exactly that's I, right. That's what I do. Yeah. I want to see yeah. how much I use. That That's the Did same way. To work out? Did you find it to work out accurately like that? I did. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, at least I know what I was, how many ounces I was spraying on. You know, but yeah. with the dope, yeah, you know. I did the weight and balance on that thing. And you know how much the the weight I had to put on the tail? Now, this whole airplane has been built, I mean, strictly from the hardware from the kit, and it's been on the plans as precisioned as anyone could ever do on a set of planes. And uh, I had to add 1.5 ounces to the tail. Wow. And that's pretty good uh, bit of weight for the tail, yeah, because it, um, especially if you get it as far back as you can, you know, you got a lot of leverage back there. But Yeah, I know. I mean, my tail moment, the tail moment on that thing is designed. It's got a long tail it's moment. It's long, yeah. I bet I know it is. And uh, I've got a, you know, a, a 3 8 uh, stabilizer built up. Uh, the flaps are 3 8 built up, you know, with ribbing and cheated and, and, um, yeah, I, the, the two fuselages, you know, it's a profile. The two pieces were laminated and, you know, together with uh, carbon fiber and then geodetric uh, ribbing from the trailing edge of the wing to the 
uh, leading edge of the stab, you know, and yeah. But all right now, it's it's flying. Um, I've got one more flight to do, and it should be trimmed out. I'm I'm weighing at uh, forty three point four. That's not a bad weight at all. Nope. What's, what's the say? wing area on that? Oh, 550, yeah. 560, something like that. I got to measure it. I can my cardinal is. remember. Yeah, yeah. Been real my, cardinal, my uh, 54 inch cardinal is uh, 579.3 square inches. So, yeah, that's a lot of wing area. That'll carry that weight all right. No problem. Yeah, the, you know, it's got the OS 40 LA 46 on it now. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. In this wheelhouse, I think. Yeah. So uh, I'm really happy. I'm, my buddy kind of talked me into doing that. And I'm glad he did because it, 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 the plane performs a lot better with that 46. Yeah. That's what I'm planning on using on mine, too. I, think I need to put that thing in to soak so I can get it all cleaned up and scrubbed up. Well, this LA forty, I bought it brand spanking new. Oh, when was it? Late nineties, and um, it hasn't been run very much, really. But it's it's broke in. You know? It's an ABN. No, it's an LA. No, I mean, uh, um, talking about the uh, liner and piston materials, ABN, ABC, or. Or, or as opposed to steel, is the LA 46 came out in both. Well, I know this. I, I, I'm not sure what it's made of. I, I know it's, uh, I know my, on the, the, the best LA 46 that I have running, and my buddy's, he's got one too. If you see a little brass showing, you know, um, on the piston. Yeah. Man, I tell you what. They really run a good four two. <laughs> yeah. You see a little brass on the piston, yeah, we kind of just say, hey, that's perfect. But on my forty six that I got in there now, it's yeah, it looks brand new still. Yeah, mine looks pretty cruddy. It's all brown, black and brown and blue. Yep. No, this one, this one ain't been browned yet at all. I've got the uh, the muffler. I cleaned it up. Muffler looks brand new, so it looks pretty good. Good. <clears throat> but what a deal! Oh, and then and then uh, I was on my stooge right, and it's running, and I put the thong on. I grab the handle, right, and I bend over to to uh, to get my uh, my stooge line that I pull yeah and I stumbled well guess uh, what happened you uh, <clears throat> pull the stooge off before you were ready that's right and guess what the, the <clears> down <throat> line the plane took off and the, and the outboard wing come up so I could see it coming at me and it was heading Perfect. down like this and guess what the line the down line caught a weed and then it just went straight in like that it didn't do anything to the plane, you know, and I'm like, what the hell is this all about? You know, the flight before I ran out of fuel right at the top, you know, and uh, I was like, oh, my. And I look good so far. Yeah. Yeah. Well, next time when you don't stumble over your stooge line, take your handle and raise it up high to get it clear of the weeds. And uh, yeah, yeah, and then uh, and then bend over and, and reach for it, right? Exactly. But see, that's one thing that that I talked to my buddy about. We believe in it that the first lead out line coming out of your tip should be the down line. Yeah. Um, and that's that the way I always because I was talking about putting the push rod on the inboard side, yeah. which would have made everything backwards. You know, well. Some people like the up line as the first line, but we talked about, because we fly a lot off the grass, you know, we don't have any asphalt anywhere, any parking lot that we can fly off of. So it's always grass and weeds we got to deal with. So 
we just stay with the first lead out as the down so in case it gets hung up and that was a perfect case right there yeah. that's usually the easiest way to build it i don't like the uh lead out i mean the uh, push rod to come out on the uh outboard side because it gets so much uh exhaust fuel and oil flowing over that area but uh but uh, you just put a good fairing over it to protect with, with that 762 muffler has got such a small orifice and it blows it straight back too and it's, and it's down low it's mainly all underneath the plane i hardly get yeah. anything on top of that wing on that right. side i do get some out there but it's not enough to where it's running right in the hole of the yeah. of the wing where the push rod's coming out of must and be, after the, way I my, anyway. must be yeah. the way i i was you remember i was talking about i open up the stingers on my 762s or actually chop them off and so it, it blows all it blows all over the underside of the plane it's just dripping goo like it landed in honey but but uh, still not on top so much but. yeah i mean that tongue muffler you know i could have got by with the uh, with uh you, you know a little less uh i i, I can't remember what the tongue muffler weighs uh right but it's a lot lighter than the 762 you know that yeah. could have saved my tail weight yeah but yeah i just you, you know what i did the uh you, you know them little leads the little buck shots that you squeeze on yeah, fishing? Split shot for yeah fish. split shot well i made a split shot out of a out of a two ounce um it was a tear i had a two ounce tear shape uh, lead sinker for fishing and then you know it had an eyelet at the top of the of the uh, teardrop I cut that off and then cut a slit down the whole length of it and then wrapped it and then put it right on my tail wheel wire and pinched it and then uh, I filled the slot up with my pencil torch and melted lead right in there Works great. I mean, it looks funny. I mean, who's going to see it sitting there on the ground anyway? You're only going to see it up in the air, and you're going to say, "Man, what the hell's he got on his tail wheel?" Yeah. <laughs> but hey, I I just didn't want to be, you know, an ounce and a half. I just didn't want to be digging and screwing and drilling anything into the into the fuselage because yeah, we were kind of talking about that the other night. And the less holes you can punch in the fuselage, the stronger it's going to be. Yeah, well, you see, the thing of it is, is, uh, is uh, the fuselage is hollow underneath there. You know, it's got it's got a geodectric design uh, ribbing. So you, you know, I just really don't want tightly to it anyway. Right. So I just don't want to just kind of get into that. So I just I said, hell with it. You know, I don't get any appearance points anyway. And I just want to build, a, you know, I just want the plane to fly really well so I can do my maneuvers well. Yeah. So, you know, if the plane lasts two years, it, the plane should should last me two years, you know. Yeah. I try well, to stay it safe. Like you're on track to be prepared uh, uh, for, you know, flying, flying a beginner pattern. Yeah, I mean, this That's is like you know, buddy. That's the main buddy, thing about being able to do a good job is just being prepared when you get to the contest and not have to exactly. worry about exactly. last minute details. I hate mean, my buddy, now, I'm sure. We're, all of our equipment is ready. I mean, when we get there, the last we got a lot to you know on our minds anyway. Yeah, let alone having to fiddle fart around with something stupid. You know, they should have been taken care of before we got there. So no matter we, how prepared I am, I can always think up some shit to worry about when I get there, too. <laughs> yep. Yep. So when I get there, you know, me and my buddy, we're just like, all we do is this. Yeah. We're just calm and we just smile because we ain't got nothing to worry about. All we got to worry about is just flying our plane. You know? Just do, do the best you can, and the rest of it's all fun. 
Yep. Yep. I mean, you, when you, you see, get out to be advanced, you can get all you can get all serious about it, and you know, and not that you're not serious about it now, but it's a whole nother level of serious. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you see, you see the guys there; they just fiddle fart and fiddle fart and fiddle fart, you know, with their with their plane there, you know, and 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 they're like, I wonder why my engines run like that. Yeah. Well, dude, you know your your fuel tank ain't even in line with your motor, or cha or they'll want to change a venturi because they ran out of gas early, rather than putting more gas in it. You know. So. Yeah, you, you know, or just fiddle farting, you know. And then some of them, you know, I I think this is a no no for me. If I have to do an engine run when we're all lined up, all of our airplanes are in the line on pit road, you know with all of our lines out and someone goes right ahead of your airplane and starts it up and runs. Uh -uh. And, and there you go. You got all that fuel oil just blowing all over my plane. I'm like, dude, <laughs> that is, that's terrible pit manners. That's yeah, total no, pit protocol. Yeah. You just don't do that, your, do that, to, a, do that to, to a guy with a $2,000 electric plane sometime. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i mean dude we do please disconnect your lead outs and get out the electric oh, guys don't even like the pit for us yeah. gas guys greasers they don't even like yeah touch them. i always uh, wayne my flying buddy he just it, it, it's more fun but he always gives me a hard time about it being all greasy so before I get him to pit for me, I always take an alcohol rag and clean the bottom of it off so it's not too slippery for his dainty little electric finger. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's like me. I take uh, alcohol and and um, I wipe down my lines when I when I roll them out. I use acetone for that actually. You know. So you know, I clean them up, and you'd be surprised all kinds of gook that's on there. Yeah. You do. That you don't realize, you know, especially mine, you know, um, you know, I got a right now. I, the air, the airplane is thoroughly spotless right now, clean. But I tell you what, when flying off that ball diamond, that you know, between first and second base, you, know, you I've got to be really careful on on handling anything. I actually have a yoga mat that I, I set that I, I put my knees on and my equipment on. Nothing yeah. ever touches that, that dirt. Cause it's like sand, you know, in a way. That's so, where you need one of those brew line filters. Chris is getting for us. That's right. You well, my buddy, my, buddy, my flying buddy today about it. And, uh, he's like what he did is he went and bought some uh, white pantyhose because his plane's white and cut out a little square. And then he just takes a, you know, and, and he's got an O-ring kit from Harbor Freight and he just finds an O-ring and just pushes it right on the venture and yeah. while it's done, you know. How many layers do you have to stack together to actually make a difference? But, like, I mean, you, you know, on mine, on profiles, it isn't so bad, but you get the engines that are inverted you know on a full fuselage and yeah that's it gets kind of dangerous where you can get a lot of stuff in there yeah you're inhaling all kind of stuff that close to the ground yeah so i, I want them for my future planes that i'm going to build anyway i'm not going to hmm tom no Tom locked up. Yeah. You with us, Tom? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can now. You locked up for a second. Oh, so do you. I think we're all back to normal now. Yep. I, I, that ain't bad. Not quite being, television quality yet. Me being normal, I don't, I don't think that's possible. <laughs>
Yeah, well, I had I had a uh, I had another fellow uh, beginner uh, call me today, and, and uh, he's all excited, you know. Uh, he's going to meet us down there on the circle on Saturday, so we're going to have quite a we're going to have quite a bunch of people there on Saturday. I told, right. I told my buddy, I said, "Hey, I'm glad I'm getting ready now and practicing and prepared because." When these other guys come, you know, I, I told them I'd help them, you know. So uh, I got all day to practice and stuff. So it's his first event ever. So I'm gonna, you know, I promised I'd help him and at least learn the pattern, get his plane set up a little bit. Yeah. Have you been draft yeah. flying the pattern in the house to practice up? Huh? Have you been draft flying the pattern inside the house just to get the stunts down in order and you know the motion well, the, uh the pattern is just just like drilled in my head it's yeah. like it's i don't even have to think about it no more <laughs> so that that's been a big help i learned i learned i finally learned that to where i don't have to worry about anything about in order or anything i i started oh late late season last year when I finally got, oh, you, you know, it just automatically does this. Oh, we had somebody new pop in, pop back out. Don't know who that yeah. was. Um, yeah, the only thing you know that'll happen to you sometimes is when you're uh, flying and going through your pattern, and something happens, like a wind gust comes along, and you have to do a little save, and then all of a sudden. Uh oh! What did I do last? What's next? <laughs> you know, so you gotta watch out for that. But that's just experience, you know. <laughs> even yeah. even the advanced and expert guys have to watch out for that. Okay. Well, I I did uh, the I did uh, uh, the other day when I was flying. I I did forget the square loop, and you know what? This airplane, I'm so happy because I actually did a square loop, and it actually looked like a square I couldn't right. believe it i couldn't that believe it was a hard one for me because i would always try to turn the corners too close together and the trick is making it huge you know you you go along wait till the plane gets way over here and then turn up and then fly way over here and then turn down and then fly way on along before you make your next turn shoulder to shoulder at least that's right yeah, yeah, I couldn't believe it. After I did the square loop, I started hopping up and down, and uh, you know, I'm out there in the circle, and I'm a hooping or hollering. I'm out here by myself. I wonder what the, wonder what the houses there's close houses close to me. You know, I wonder what the hell they was thinking I was doing out there. Just I'm nut out there. Yeah, well, Danny Banjok does that in the middle of patterns sometimes too. He'll do a little, do a little dance. He's a he's yep. a funny guy. Yeah, he is. But he wrecked his Nats plane the other day, the one he had just finished building. He was out trimming it in uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, he hit some trees that had grown in farther than he estimated, and it uh, apparently wandered off the circle a little bit and demolished his Nats plane. Oh, no. Not the Raven. I'd have to look back on Cox Engine Forum. Ken Cook told me about that, one of the Philly Flyers, but that sounds right. Mm. Man. Ken said when he left it was like a funeral out there but, hey that's the way it is in control line though you just got to know when you launch that plane on every single flight it could easily be the last flight that plane ever flies and it's the same with RC I guess but they can fly what they call what two mistakes high three mistakes high but with 60 feet of line we're a hundredth of a second from disaster the whole flight. <laughs> Especially with, you know, five foot pullouts. You get dinged by the judges if you pull out higher than five feet. Not necessarily as a beginner. But don't worry about that so much as a beginner. Uh, the maiden voyage of that P-40 of mine, I went out with my flying buddy and uh, he took his uh, vector out and he got... Uh, pilot award 
on the intermediate at the NAF site. I'm a good lord. And, uh, and yeah, he uh, weaves out practicing that day, and he said, it's my fault. I wasn't paying attention, and he came out of a square inside too low and smacked the ground with it. And it busted the uh, the tail right off. Well, I just got a picture of it tonight, and you can't even tell that it even happened. Yeah, well, I, if I had to pancake one at the bottom of a loop, I'd rather do it inverted than with the right side up where the wheels hit first, because um, you really bust off the rudder, but it it doesn't do as much damage, and the wings might not flex as far because the ground would stop them now. I mean, it took the landing gear. I thought all it did was because it kind of went in, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty flat, you know. And I thought it was oh great, it's just the landing gear to come off because the landing gear is on that vector is on the fuselage, yeah, it's on the belly of the fuselage. So I seen it come off and roll up, and and then uh, I started walking out there, and that's when I seen the the whole tail snapped off about. Oh, an inch, an inch ahead of the horizontal stabilizer. Yeah, all the way around. It was. It was. It yeah. was in Luckily, so, that's easy to fix, but uh, you got to be careful about adding weight, fixing it when it breaks back there. Well, he was he was in the mix of of. Uh, he was telling me after the first flight that day. He's going, yeah, I, I'm. I think I'm going when I get back to the shop. I, I need to add just a little bit more tail weight. <laughs> so fix right there he said hey that fix right there ought to do me ought to do me good because i need a little tail weight back there anyway i've heard so many people say it flies better after the first uh first wreck <laughs> yeah we had so, somebody it, 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 on us named cool kid again she pops in and pops back out so she said something just a minute ago did y'all see that yeah i know it yep. yeah It'd be like if if I start talking about my airplane and I say the name of my airplane right when she comes in. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's okay. Anybody that wants to come in and talk can come. So even even people that don't know what the hell we're talking about, we had one guy pop in one night and write on YouTube says, "I don't know what the hell y'all are talking about." I was searching for some game site and he said but it sure seems interesting so i think he hung around yeah. a minute and listened yeah, to I, it. I, i've seen that posted up there yeah remember that but bunch yeah of the fellows it's getting, it's getting close man four days yeah yeah and and you'll you'll be all right and you'll start getting nervous on on the last day or so and the closer you get to the flying sites you know, you'll start thinking about, oh, God, did I check this? Or you'll start second-guessing yourself. Hey, I, not. I, think, I think out of, out of uh, I started 2015, and this is this will be my third match. I think this year is actually really the first time that I'm going to be really prepared. Yeah, having been there before is an advantage, I'm sure. Well, I mean, you know, it's... it's you just you just learn along the way you know everyone's got to find their own groove you know yep i mean you, you look at these experts and these you know advance and their planes and stuff and you're like oh yeah i'll build one of them you know i'll get just like that well it takes a little bit especially you know it, it's not like you can work on them every day every day yeah. every day every day every day every day well those guys do some of them fly every day, at least, and that's just I don't have that much time in my life. I got other. You got too much life going on still. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's just fun. I do it as much as I can, but uh, we got other things to do too. I mean, yeah, it'd, it'd be. Uh, it's, it feels good to be prepared. Sparky <laughs> interviewed uh, Bob Hunt about uh, the world championships trip uh, 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 one year, a couple of years ago on, on one of his videos. And uh, uh, Bob asked Paul, Bob said he was going out to fly. Come on, Paul. And Paul says, 
what for? And Bob says to practice. And Paul says, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to practice. And Bob's like, what? You don't, you don't want to practice? And Paul's like, uh, nah, man, I've done, done all this before. So <laughs> I'd like to think some of those guys might be watching us, but I doubt it. Hopefully, if you guys are, you'll post something and say hi to us. No. It was yeah. nice to have David Fitzgerald come out to Triple Tree at the Joe yeah. Hall and but fly. With us. That was I fun. Know, I know Paul Walker's been practicing now. I know because uh, he's been posting a couple things from the uh, uh, the uh, WSR. You know what that stands for? Uh. Washington State something? No, Walker Stunt Walker Stunt Ranch. Oh, that's right. I have heard that. Yeah, I think you got to be a member of that clique to get invited there. Yeah, so he he's been out there. He's he's saying his uh, his P forty seven. He's he's saying that uh, man. I wish I would have done this wing years ago. The wing that he has on that 47 he likes that plane that plane really says he, he wish he would have done that years ago i always get confused p47 is the thunderbolt yep okay yep so his his name of his plane is royal flush <laughs> that's a good name yeah he's got he's got some He's got, I think, four or five, you know, cards, you know, spread out like you're holding them in your hand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I think it's, I think he, I think he used hearts. I can't remember what, what uh, suit he went in. He's got red on his plane, so I think it's hearts that he used. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I'd, I'd, I can't wait. I'd like to see it up close and personal, so I'll see it. I'll see him fly. Royal Flesh is Jack King, Queen Ace, right? Yep. 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 He, yeah, it looks like looks like regular deck cards, man. He did. He's a hell of a, he's a hell of a plane builder. Yeah, an artist. I mean, we're uh for whatever level we're on, we're artists as well as mechanics and builders. Machinists, yeah. mechanic builders, engineers, a lot of different uh, skills go into it. Can't be dumb and do this. No. Yeah, no. Not successfully, anyway. Yeah. But... I've just been I've been fortunate, you know, and the the planes that I'm building are planes that I have that I have won, you know, that I have uh, I have, you know. So it's 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 kind of nice to build it and and say, hey, this is this is what I got last year on my walk around at the Nats, you know, mm -hmm. and you know I I show the contest director who is uh, Michael Stilson. Uh, Stinson and uh, he's like oh hey that's great they, they like that when you when, when you get something from the beginner event and then you put it together and fly it in the event yeah and lets them know say hey you 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 know you're there to learn you're there to build airplanes you're there to compete and, and get better yeah. and move on I mean, to another class that, and, that deserves just as much respect as anybody yeah, yeah, that's what I I feel is when you put that together and bring that with you. That's to me, it's respect of saying thank you for yeah for letting me you know even have this plane. Yeah. So. Yep. Getting excited. All I all I'm doing now is uh, going to sleep and waking up, thinking airplanes. Driving yeah. everybody nuts. Got airplanes on the brain. Yeah. Driving everybody, uh, driving everybody nuts around me and my family, you know. <laughs> don't be, just be careful when you're driving your car and don't be flying any patterns while you're driving. 
I've been known to do that before, and uh, it's a bad idea. <laughs> my buddy, my my buddy says I'm a windbag when we go when we go to events and traveling. His wife will tell him, "Well, you know, if you're tired on the way back, I don't don't be driving. You know, don't fall asleep." And he goes, "Hell no, I ain't got time to sleep. Get tired of your yik yaks the whole way." <laughs> We had somebody comment on YouTube that I didn't notice. Frank C. Washburn the third uh, said, "Hey guys, sorry I couldn't join the hangout, but he's at work till seven o'clock a.m. Um, so sorry we missed you when you posted, Tom. I'm guessing he probably had to go back to work after he uh, uh, dropped that in the chat over there." Yep. Anybody know that name, Frank Washburn? Oh yeah, yeah. He joins us. Uh, yeah. Joins us a lot. He, he okay. was the one that. Uh, Right now he's he's doing this uh, biplane. He's putting together a biplane right now, uh -huh. and, and yeah, he, he just got a he just he's doing a June RXL. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, he was on Friday night. Oh yeah. Oh, was he? Oh, oh, Frank. That's Frank. Okay, I see his picture closer now. Had a look. I didn't realize that was his last name. Sorry, Frank. Yep. Yep. I like him. He's a pretty good guy. Yeah, he is. Me and uh me and him and another guy, we have group chat on Messenger and uh yeah, we're we're cutting up on that all the time. Yeah. This we talk on regular one time you guys started it up and my phone started making noise and I didn't know what it was and realized you were on. So I jumped on and talked to y'all for a while. It was one that Sparky wasn't involved in. I wonder what Sparky's doing tonight. Well, I don't know. Probably in bed right now. Yeah, probably so. If yeah. he wasn't, he'd probably jump on here and at least say hi. No, he's he's done. It's Monday. Had a rough day. Hell with it. He's in bed. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate him trusting me to hold the thing down, hold down the fort. So, oh, by the way, I meant to mention to y'all, I am going to the beach again this weekend, and so I'm going to do the uh, next chat this week on Thursday night rather than Friday, and it'll probably be a shorter one. Oh boy! I can't, I always say that, and then we always go on until twelve thirty, but. Well, um, Friday, Friday morning, I'm I'm leaving early in the morning to head to Muncie. Oh, uh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I think we might be, be going out. So, yep. I'll give we you, might not get many visitors. Yeah, I'll give you a status report. <laughs> How far is that for you? Oh, almost five hour drive. That's not too bad. No, it's not. We get there late afternoon and we don't even go to the hotel. We we go right to AMA headquarters, do a registering and all that good stuff, and then we leave from there and we get in the truck and we head out to the flying circle and start flying. And we we do that nonstop until the sun goes down. And then we do it on the next day and then Sunday we do our event and then about one or two o'clock, we're just like <laughs> <laughs> run out. <laughs> we're yeah. ready. To, After we're ready. the last contest, I told somebody because we had two contests in three weeks or two weeks actually. I told somebody, man, I feel like I've been tied to a rope and drugged behind a Harley Davidson down a gravel road. Yeah. <laughs> Or knuckles dragging the ground and yeah. butt dragging, you know. It takes a lot of energy. Yep. Carrying the flight box from one place to another and walking back and forth. And that's it's good. It keeps us fit. But um I finally, you know, I was complaining about limping around and couldn't fly when we went out to Bob's house the other day and uh, uh just yesterday and today that hip starting to feel better and uh I can uh, walk around without limping quite so bad. So it looks like my flying days ought to be coming back within a week, I guess. I'm going to just go easy on it. 
I thought I was almost there a week ago and ended up uh, standing up too fast and tweaking it. So I was mad at myself. Yeah, be careful. Yeah, I mean, no, sucks, man. Last last year we got done with our event, you know, and we were hungry, so we went and ate a lunch, and then we was driving back, and we both looked at each other and said, uh, "Well, what do you think?" And I knew what he was thinking. He knew what I was thinking. I was like, "Dude, I need a nap." And he goes, uh, "You know, yeah. that's what I was thinking too." So we went back to the hotel and we were supposed to meet someone out there at about six at night. And we woke up and it was eight o'clock. Oh, eight o'clock at night, I man. I remember that story. Yeah. And we're like, holy crap. We, yeah. Yeah. We, it, 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 it just zonked us out after that yeah. event. And then, you know, then Monday we get up and it's, oh, yeah, we're all refreshed and ready to go. And then we go to Building 180 for the Concord, you know. That's really cool. I love that. I love going and watching, looking at all the planes on that floor. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful planes there, let me tell you. Well, um, you guys, when you fly beginner and intermediate out there do y'all have a grass circle or do you have to fly over yep. too? yeah there's, there's three of them out there are they good okay yep if it's nice and clipped and and smooth where you can do good rollouts landing and taking off i like grass um rather than pavement because it sure doesn't bust a plane up as bad when you hit the yeah grass. pavement, pavement is, is is real intimidating you know? Yep. Yeah. Because the first thing I thought of was, I keep, I keep thinking, flames really take a pounding when they hit the pavement, too. Yeah, I keep thinking, oh, my engine, man. I yeah. worry about my engine. I don't care about the plane. I'm just like, man, that'll mess my engine up. Yeah. Well, put softer bolts in it, I guess. Some people do that for flying over pavement so that they're sort of sacrificial bolts and It'll, it'll break the engine away easier than if you've got hard steel bolts holding them in. Yeah, I get, yeah, that's right. But some of them bolts are so hard that they shear real easy. Mm-hmm. So that's just like cabinets on a wall. You hang cabinets on a wall, you don't want to use a hardened bolt. Right. Soft bolt because it doesn't shear as easy. And uh, um, I guess a softer bolt is less problematic about working loose with vibration. Yeah, I mean it, it'll stretch, you know. But the, if you hit a if you hit a harder bolt real hard, man, it'll shear that thing. Yeah, it, it has great tension on it, you know, tension strength. But yeah, I just worry about the, about that. This time when I go fly this year, I'm going to go to every circle and fly at least two flights off of every circle out there. Get used to them. Yeah. Because every circle, I mean, the grass, they, they do a hell of a job, man. I mean, it's nice and it's, and, and it's great, but there's different grasses. There, there's, one, there's one field that's real thick. You know, it's mowed real low, but it's thick. And yeah. Then there's one field that's mowed real low, but it's it's thinned out, you know. So yeah, last year we was practicing just on one circle, and then at the beginning event they it was at another circle, and uh, I had to take an attempt because it couldn't take off. You flew two rounds of the same event on two different circles. Is that what you're saying? Or no one one event, but one event on one two circles, and they just. Okay. To have right. the event. Yeah. But that day before we was practicing on, we thought would be, this is the circle that the event is going to hold. You know, this is the the circle they're going to use. And yeah, it wasn't the case. I've, I've set my plane up on the wrong pit, making assumptions like that before too. So. Yeah. So we flew one whole day on a circle that wasn't even in the event. 
So then we went to that circle, and I couldn't even take off. I had to, I had to actually, I tore my spats right off of my plane. That's that was what was on my wheels, and that's what yeah. was holding my plane up and causing it to go. <laughs> yeah, it was actually a joke. I mean, Bob Hunt made a real good joke about it. It was funny. Uh, he was all sitting there talking about flying our bent, you know, and and uh, yeah, I, I can't remember what was said, but it was pretty funny, man. We were all laughing because you know, Mel Creasy. Yeah, is he a funny guy? I've heard he is. Creasy's pretty- got to learn. He's first. Creasy, Creasy's got to learn how to take off first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Yeah, that kind of set up a chain of events too, you know. When there you are, you're ready, and and you're like, "Wow, you, you know, I can't even take off." Are you kidding me? <laughs> that just, you know, you're embarrassed, you're you're mad at yourself, and and you're confused, like, "What the hell's going on?" You know, and and you're like, "Wow," and you're like getting upset, and then the guy who's launching your plane, he's all upset going, hey, man, it wasn't me. I swear yeah. to God, I, 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 I wasn't. I'm like, no, dude, you're, you're fine. You're fine. But, you, you know, it, it kind of throws you for a loop, but then your whole head's not in the game. Yeah. Yeah, you so, can get blown off your game by stuff like that. So. Yeah. It's like I, a, I had to wait. You know, I was 17th, no, 27th in line to fly profile at Huntersville last October. After 27 flights, I had lost my edge. I mean, it, I just couldn't, you know, I, I'm focused and razor sharp, but after sitting through 27 flights, um, man, I was about asleep when it was my turn to finally fly. Yeah. Flew like it too. Rusty, where's Rusty at? Where the hell is Rusty at? He's over there in the chair. He's sleeping. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure he's sleeping? Better go I'm check. <laughs> I managed to pull it off anyway, though. <laughs> so we don't fly at Huntersville for a profile on Saturday. We don't fly skill classes. So everybody, experts, beginners, and everybody just flies together. I love that event because of that. You get to fly with so many, but that was the 35th anniversary uh, uh, contest, and so it attracted more people than usual. And got a hat and glasses on. I didn't even recognize him. Yeah, some stranger checking in over there. Now I now I, I can recognize see. the ceiling now. Yeah, hey Steve. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I can't anymore. My eyes are getting so bad that when I wear my regular glasses, I can't see up close. As I was, I was actually had them up high, looking under them, and then you guys say that I pushed the thing up to the ceiling. <laughs> yeah, you that was getting good. home from work, bud. Yeah, I've been getting the trailer ready, so I was having a hell of a time getting the uh, water heater lit. The uh, gas valve was sticking, but. If you whack it with a big screwdriver a bunch of times, yeah. once in a while they start working again. That's there what you, you call percussive maintenance. That's 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 very that's very great for fixing a lot of things. Is hitting on it. Yeah. Screwdriver well, hand on my hand. cell phone after it died the other day, but it didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you got. It depends on what you're hitting. Yeah. A little percussive maintenance. I had to time it just right to where once I heard it start clicking, I knew that it would want the light, so I whack it. And first, it only open a little bit and just piss out like a pilot plane and go out. And then uh, I kept on and off and on and off and on and off, and it finally opened all the way. And it a some rust in it. You think it was just some rust in it or something? Yeah, no, usually, that aluminum usually, body gets that uh that that white dust on it from you know corrosion. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of moisture in propane. Yeah, a lot of times I don't know why, but spiders like to go up in that orifice. They love to. 
I don't know, get a nest in there or something, but they love inside of that thing. I checked that first, but that wasn't it. So I'm like, I well, that, that was good because sometimes that's you might have. Sometimes you got to disassemble them, you know, clean them out. Well, if it was a gas valve, and I'd had to buy it through an RV store, should I probably have to pay two hundred fifty dollars for it? Yeah, well, any, anything you had to buy for a trailer like that, they jack the price up and quadruple it. Yeah. Some of the stuff I can I can fix myself, you know, by going, like some of the motors, these 12-volt motors and stuff, I can go to the our suppliers and stuff and have them special order. I, I fixed the furnace once that way. I forget. It was almost as much money for that damn fan motor than I could have. It probably paid for that that furnace when it was that old thing was bought. Yeah. Yeah. Wait until you wait until you have to go buy a refrigerator. One of them. My land of living. Yeah, you know, when I first started out in heating and air conditioning, there was uh God, what was his Oh, the refrigeration man, he called this business. And when he quit and sold it, he went into RV stuff. Now, one day I went over there because I was having a problem with mine. And he was, he was turned, stood one up on the end. And he says, oh, yeah, you got to turn them sometimes and get that stuff to start to mix. And then, you know, if they set for a long time, and then it'll finally generate. Because it's really not ammonia. It's, I forget what's in it. But some of the stuff hardens out or whatever. It went on the um, on the twelve volt side of cooling. Now there's chem. Uh, is it vent? Not benzene. Bro bromine and something else inside the refrigerators. And it heats up, and it turns to gas, and then uh, basically it turns back to a, you know then it goes and it cools it down to a liquid and the pressure pushes it through goes back to gas and comes in and mixes with that bromine or what bro, whatever yep, yep. refrigeration works on that i'd have to look it up again no, that's, that's, yeah, i forget that's the um the lp side of it yeah the electric side does the same thing they just heat that that bromine or whatever yeah either with a flame or with a with a little heating element yep but boy, they're expensive. Oh, I know it. But I guess you can get them going. He was repairing all kinds of them, and you could go there and get them a lot cheaper. But the big I thing was they're not. My buddy just said them. hell with it, and he went and put in, a, measured the hole, and found a 110 unit and just put it right in there, and he just plugs it in because anywhere he goes anyway, he uses electricity. Yeah. He says it kind of sucks because I don't have anything, you know. You know, as I'm pulling it, my refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, not getting cold. Well, what I do is, it sets out alongside my garage, and now three times we've lost power here in a storm. As soon as I lose power, I go out there and turn on the freezer and refrigerator, fire it up, and then it'll be cold. And it takes usually about 10 hours, but that's about time I got to pull my stuff out of the refrigerator. My power don't come back on. Put it in there and leave it till my power comes. At least my food doesn't spoil. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a good, that's a good, that's a good thing to have. Yeah, so you that part works. that way, like for emergencies, a storm or whatever, you have a, you have a refrigerator. Just as long as you well, keep what I, LP. What I have done before is go fill the water tank up and all that kind of stuff. Power goes out. I can take a shower out there. You know. I can cook food what because it's all self-contained. Yeah, or or else if you get kicked out of the house, you got somewhere to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah, I, that happened to me like twenty years ago. <laughs> but I just everybody asked me, they said, When you getting married again? I said, I just can't afford to live with only a quarter of my shit. I already <laughs> got to live with half of it. <laughs> 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 yeah yeah i did things kind of backwards i got married didn't have any kids got divorced then had a kid with someone i just met 
and the bar and stuff like that. It, so it's okay. ended up paying a whole lot, of, whole lot of child support and a whole lot of shit to the ex-wife when she left. Yeah, you you, you know when the, you know they've made a lot of songs, country songs like you know. You got the gold mine, and he. I got the shaft. Got the shaft, yeah. You know, she and always Jerry Reed or somebody, wasn't it? She always gets everything, right? Well, guess what? This is my luck. I was left with everything. Wow. A business, house, kids. <laughs> she just packed that's up what, and left, huh? That's, I'm like, that's what my wife told me. She said, if she ever leaves. You get it. You can have everything. I don't want any of this stuff. Can't yeah, I don't. Like, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want any of it either. But no, my luck. Yeah, the only woman on earth that didn't want nothing. <laughs> Luckily, we got past that stage a long time ago. Yeah, pretty good. Been a pretty what's good ride. What's that course. kit behind you? Huh? What's that kit behind Rusty? I keep seeing a glimpse of it real quick. Yeah, Cardinal. that's the Cardinal. There you oh, go. Okay. Oh, yeah, now a, I can see it. Yeah, it's a replica of Wendy Ertnowski's, uh That's that's Brodax Cardinal kit. And uh, it's not going to be there much longer. I still hadn't cleaned up the shop, leveled the glass on the table, and I'm going to get it out there and uh, take a look and get it working. I got, the, got <laughs> both sets of plans that I'm sitting here and been looking at. Got to take them down and have them copied on a 30 by 42 printer at Staples. They said five bucks each. So that's maybe, not maybe you can get that fly swatter shocker and start whacking you with it to get your butt moving on that cardinal. I'm moving as fast as I can, dude. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm taking every step in its stride. If I try to move too fast, I'll end up end up hurting myself and then having to stop everything for a week or two. So, Oh, well, don't do that. No, that's what I'm getting over that gimpy hip now, I think. And so, uh, this coming, do you have like a, a treadmill or something to walk or exercise? That's what I use control line flying for walking yeah. and exercising. I'm getting better. I can make it to the refrigerator and back now a bunch of times a night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to exercise and, you know, 12 ounces at a time. But yeah, I got that elbow working good there. I, I, don't, I don't do that anymore, so I only get the coffee cup in the morning, and that's about it. That's like me and my diet Mountain Dew everybody kids me about, but that took the place of beer. Yeah, I drink about as much of that a day as I did beer. So <clears throat> I didn't it was better for me. I quit drinking beer. I just got tired of it. You know, it didn't make me feel like it. Made me used oh, to like feel, and and I can't do the stuff I like. I can't I, play airplanes when I'm drinking beer. So you know, I just kind yeah, of yeah. realized one day I hadn't hadn't been drinking anymore. So that suited me fine. I, I just a buddy, buddy got me I back in flying, and I figured it out I couldn't afford to drink and fly model airplanes. <laughs> I had to give up one of them. So yeah, yep. Well, I smacked my face on the concrete, and that slapped it right out of me. So that'll knock some sense into you. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it just slapped me right out. Yeah, I, I haven't had a, a bit of alcohol since. And I, and I got a bunch of airplanes, you know? Yeah. So people go, how do you afford to buy that? How do you afford to build them? I'm like, well, that's my beer money right there. Yeah, and that's a hell of a lot of money, too. You know, and they're telling me this as they're taking a drink of their beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that case of beer that you just drank, that's, that's 20 bucks. Well, you know, that could have bought me a lot of sheets of balsa wood and nards. And that's a day. A lot of these, you know, I got friends that drink a damn 12 or 18 a day. I know. I got friends that, that drink a case, 24 cans. And Man. cigarettes, cigarettes will thin your wallet out pretty quick these days, too. 60, that's, 50, 50 bucks a carton. 
I spend yeah, I, know I spend forty dollars for two cartons. Wow. But I roll all mine. Oh, do you really? I, I've been doing that. I've been doing that some, but I end up running I've been, out. I've been rolling work. cigarettes. I've been rolling cigarettes for eleven years. I'm real good at it. I can I can roll sixty cigarettes in seventeen minutes. I started vaping, thinking that was going to get me off the cigarettes, but nah, it didn't. Well, I tried that too, and they said it was a Chinese one. I end up getting some kind of like an asthma attack and couldn't breathe, and in the hospital. Oh no! I thought I was having a heart attack. Yeah, I, maybe I had the same trouble because I wasn't getting enough uh, smoke or whatever it is out of it, and. Uh, and then it ended up making me cough whenever I smoked it. So I quit smoking the vape and went back to cigarettes. So that's no good either, but. Yeah, I got it. Oh, that was a bad problem. Yeah, I got it. I quit a while, then I started smoking cigarettes and hitting that damn vapor thing when I couldn't smoke around, you know, in some places. Yeah. Yeah, I got, I got, I got one of them vapor things too. You know, that's what I'll be doing Friday on my trip because my line buddy doesn't allow any smoking in the vehicle. Maybe I'll find a way to get there. You gotta get there Friday. Uh, yeah, Friday should be about four. Wow. Four or five. You you staying in a motel? You camping? Yeah, we're staying in a motel, but we had one guy cut out on us and. And uh, we we posted it's been posted a couple days, but we're looking for someone to share uh, a room with us to help help on the expense of the cost of the hotel. It he my buddies uh, told us uh, thirty dollars thirty dollars a night, and you get a queen bed to sleep in. That's a hell of a good deal. Yep. Uh, we uh, got another question from the uh, YouTube gang again i didn't realize it was out there but charles williams i hope you're still watching he says he hadn't been able to find anybody around his area that flies control line and his question is how does a guy get started by himself and keep the motivation if you've got nobody to learn to fly from or fly with i got i got one i got one one suggestion is uh get yourself a stooge so you can hold the airplane while you start it, while you run out to the lines and just take off. I'm by Has myself. Has he flown before at all? Huh? Has he flown before? Charles, are you still with us out there, bud? Um, have you uh, flown with anybody else before? Send us a, send us a line on the chat. While he's doing that, I'm on. Post our link again. I wrote it down there and forgot to forgot to send it. Yeah, send the hangout link, not the lathe link. Yeah, I did. Let's see. Yep, there you go. Well, guys, you're going to see the ceiling for a minute because I'm going to go get me another Mountain Dew. Okay. Okie dokie. Maybe Charles is still watching. I hope he heard that. Uh, yeah, getting a stew is a good way to at least get it launched. But if you don't have somebody with you to um, help you fly, get your engine runs right, and just basic stuff, companionship as much as anything. It's tough. I got a friend in West Virginia, um, uh, Roger Altizer, Altizer. Never asked him how he pronounces that. Um, but uh, he's got nobody up there to fly with. But he likes to come down to go to contests when he can. But uh, that's the only time he gets to fly with anybody else. He doesn't have anybody to watch his wings and tell him if his uh, tip weight or flaps need adjusting or anything like I that. Know. Uh, my, I've kind of wondered how much flying he's done, and you know, because I would, I would suggest too. I got that uh, Brodak uh, 
Ringmaster Electric, all that whole setup, that thing flies so sweet that, and you can set, you know, the delay and walk out there and get the handle and stuff like that. That that That's works really, really nice. Electric will be would be an advantage for a lone flyer. Yeah, because yeah. you don't. It's like with Samantha flying this new vector, you know, this E vector, whatever. She says it's so much more enjoyable because she doesn't have to worry about the engine. You know, me setting the engine. It's yeah. flying 5.1. Now it's flying 5.3. And she says it really throws you off in uh, your timing. She goes, it's so much nicer to practice when it runs. And I've never been able to get engine runs, you know. I do a pipe motor, but then we crash that airplane. And, you know, trying to trying to get motor runs and shit like that. And yeah, that's a whole other hobby in itself. Is getting the engines run right, and uh, Charles says, "Yeah, he's flown half A before." So, hell, yeah, if you can fly half A, you can fly anything. Yeah, that uh, that Ringmaster setup that Dennis designed, it works perfect. I bought the airplane, and I stuck my own motor on it and battery and all that kind of stuff, and the damn thing didn't fly worth a crap, and it was a little no, it was nose heavy or whatever. I went back and got the motor that Dennis said to use on it got me a 2200 milliamp pack the little lighter packs and stuff put it on there it balances perfect and that damn thing that's the best flying ringmaster I ever flew and that's what Samantha said that's the best flying ringmaster she's ever flown no be darn yeah he, he's got it set up to where it it is really a plug and play plus another thing you know if you practice somewhere and it's in a you know, in a neighborhood, at least electric doesn't bother people as much as a, as an engine. I know it. I was at John Harris's house uh, Saturday for Mike's graduation, and uh, he flew his new uh, Oriental electric. Because he flies in his backyard, but he doesn't want to piss his neighbors off and stuff. Charles says he's... Uh Looking at you know. a Brodak Cardinal or something along those lines. He says he's been flying RC for 40 years. And uh, so, yeah, Cardinal is a pretty nice kit. There's probably something simpler that you could get to work your way up to it. Um, some kind of work plane like a Ringmaster or something like that would probably be quicker and easier to build and more fun for you. And if you clobber the ground with it quicker to repair uh, uh cardinals are pretty pretty big uh um complicated even for a profile complicated kit um i'm i'm thinking and there's always rfs you know arfs you can you can buy but when you wreck an arf sometimes they're not built all that great and you've really done more damage to an arf than you would if you would you mean an arf kit to me, ARF scare the hell out of me. I'll tell you what, there's this guy, I, and it's a little expensive, but he gets, I think it's inch and a quarter by inch and a quarter carbon tube, and he builds a wing around it. And then he puts his motor mounts, um, wooden motor mounts on it, and that's just the right spacing for a... a like a LA or whatever. Yeah. Glues the tail and stuff on the end. It's it's a profile, but it's that carbon fight. That thing will take a hell of a whack. Because he's uh yeah, those kind of planes will. That rugged he, flight streak's probably a good starter for a thirty five or forty size plane. Or twenty five even. Even a even a sky ray, a solid solid wood sky ray is a good one. Yeah, a sky ray from SIG manufacturing. And uh, I recommend putting balsa ribs in it instead of the ply ribs, that light ply ribs that come with it. But uh, if you are, uh, we'll look on stunthanger.com. There's a lot of information about building sky rays. That's a real popular stunt trainer. Oh, hey. uh, Eric Rule is uh, RST. Is that right? RSM. RSM. 
RSM rugged street trainer. Uh, yeah. RST. Hey Who's Steve. Coming? Yeah. I, I I just I just got this in the mail today. Right here, there's four sheets, and they're all control line model kits for sale. I'll be bringing and we're going to be posting those up in the next couple of days. Hey Charles, are you a member of StuntHanger.com? Let us know if you are, because there's a lot of information you can get. Any question you could possibly ask, answer it on that forum. Where's he? Where's he living? Uh, let's see if he said he didn't say where he's. Let me look up top. He was here when we first started early on. Good in, in Northwest Indiana. Northwest. Should he's and he's pretty close to Chicago. I mean, there's a lot of clubs there. I'm not sure. He got on Stun Hanger. He'd probably find somebody. I don't be like in South Bend or whatever. Charles, I recommend you join Stunt Hanger if you're not already there. Uh, StuntHanger.com. Here, I'll I'll post a uh, link to it. And. Um, that is where to go to find everything you need to know. Let me uh, go to the home page. Because uh, I'm trying to think, you know, if, if he is more by the Detroit area, but that's that's over uh, that's over Ohio. Um, I don't know how close he is to Kalamazoo, but they have a big club there. Now they got paved paved circle and everything. Okay, you know, I'm fixing in just a minute to post. Let me get back to the YouTube page. All right, let's see. Paste stunthanger.com. Boom. I'm going to write a note too. Yeah, because I don't know, you know, how far down in Indiana he is. You know, if it's, it's an hour and a half for me to get to uh, Kalamazoo. Well, we go down there a couple times a year, fly with everybody. But, you know, if he wanted to meet up, you know, we'd do it just to, just to meet up and give him a hand. How long a drive was it for you, Steve, going to the Nats? It's uh, about four and a half hours in a car. It takes me about, oh, five and a half, I think, pulling that trailer to six. Depends how much I stop and stuff like that. What the traffic's like. What's it for you? It must be around five, isn't it? Yeah, five hours. Valparaiso, Valparaiso, Indiana. Oh, and he is a member of Stunt Hanger already. Okay. Valparaiso. Well, hell, Newman lives down that way by Valparaiso. Someplace around in there, I think. Oh, the uh, yeah, the Stuka Stunt Works guy, Leonard Newman. Okay. Leonard Newman, yeah. They live in, uh, oh, shit, I know the name of it. The town where Red Skelton come from. Um, shit. Damn, I hadn't thought of Red Skelton in ages. <laughs> he was, a, he was a, a friend of my mom and dad's. It was her mom. Went to school with him and actually talked to, with him and stuff every once in a while. That they went from kindergarten to graduation to school together in Vincennes, Indiana, where they're from. Charles yeah, says she he's an hour and a half from Chicago. Huh? Charles says he's an hour and a half from Chicago. Ask him how far he is from Kalamazoo, Michigan. How about Kalamazoo, Charles? Is that where you're from, Steve? Michigan. I'm actually from Wyoming, Michigan, which is part of, you know, it's outskirts of Grand Rapids. Yeah. And then Samantha's mom lived in Howard City, which, oh, was about 45 miles north. Well, to get joint custody and stuff, I had to move halfway. 
Hey, Chris. So that's how I ended up up here. Pretty good. We got can't stay on too long tonight. Here. What'd you say? Look, said I can't stay on too long. I got a got a question for Steve. The the campgrounds over at the Nationals, where the hell are they? I I look down the satellite and I don't see where they park them. Okay. <clears throat> you pull in and you come. But it goes in past the uh, museum and stuff. Yeah. Goes back in and it hang. You hang a right. Quick. I mean, you hang a left, and then you hang a quick right and follow that road back around to the campground. It's actually right across from the L pad, but it's where the uh, the pylon racers were in between. It goes campground pylon L pad. There's a there's a road that goes past the L pad. It's a different road. Hey Chris, when you, when you get there to AMA, the first yeah. thing you want to do is go in and check in. Yeah, and uh, they'll give you everything. You, there's a, a a map, and it'll tell you they'll tell you exactly where to go. Okay, and I kind of figured so, but I was just uh, thinking ahead here, and I'm I'm looking on the satellite, and I'm thinking, you know, I'm looking for like campsites, and I don't. What is it? Just a big field? It's a big well, brown. Parking lot. Is it what? A gravel parking lot. That's it. Yeah, and it's got all the electric and stuff set up there. Really? Was it like temporary yeah. electric stuff or what? Or no, it it's in the ground. Really? Camp thing. Okay. Now you got. Are you got a camper? You tent it or? Camper. Yeah, there actually is another one if you go. Straight back from there, behind, there's another uh, campground. And that one is for the RC pattern guys and all that kind of stuff. You could camp there. It don't matter where you do it. But a lot of them guys pull back because the ground's so flat. They pull back their, their trailer on top of the grass. Okay. But yeah, if, uh, you did it, if you did it at the campground where I usually stay, you'd go down in a big bowl. Really? Okay. Yeah, I was just like, I'm like. But yeah, if you get you look on the satellite, you'll see the L pad, and then and it's hard to east of that. I think it's it's well, hard for me to pick what direction I'm at when I'm at the Nats. From what you just told me, that's going to help me out because I'm just what I'm thinking. I'm going to be looking at is regular camping sites you know they got the little parking areas with the trees and shit and stuff like that like a like a state park obviously yeah, they, i'm looking at the wrong thing <laughs> yeah this camper parking like in the right parking lot the windswept plains there's no trees or anything around but you'll mm -hmm. see you'll see the l pad then you'll see the pylon course which is paved travel parking lot and that's that's it and you'll see the bathhouse there and stuff all right, cool. So it isn't, it isn't too bad. You just don't go outside barefoot, I tell you that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unless you got some tough feet. Yeah, you got well, stone bruises. I'm set up in my driveway right now, and it's all gravel, so I'm going to be used to that. <laughs> Charles Williams just said he's an hour and 45 from Kalamazoo. But tell him if he ever wants to meet up there, I'll drive. I'll drive down. It's an hour and a half for me, but I'll drive down and even meet him there. Okay. That's uh, Charles. That's Steve Hines talking, by the way. Uh, father of the famous Samantha Hines. Yeah, we might even pull Samantha's leg and get her out there to help out. Probably if she can bring her boyfriend along, she'd go. Yeah, Samantha's what, a 17 year old expert control line precision aerobatics pilot. Or she's 16 this year. She'll be uh, she'll be okay. 17 in like three weeks. Uh, but she'll be 16 when she's there. Mm. Oh. Yeah, she's going to fly advanced, so. 
Let's see. If, if she flies as good as she has been at home, she's going to give them a hell of a run for their money. Good. So we'll That's see. Great. I think it's awesome. She does in front of the judges. Charles, you can PM Steve Hines on Stunt Hanger. H E I N Z, right? That's always H I N E S. Okay. That's close. Yeah, it's the uh, Scottish way to spell Heinz. Oh, I'm a Scot too. Are mm -hmm. you? Actually, Scotch, Irish, and English, but Scotch mostly, I think. I think I got a little Irish in me, but I'm mostly Scottish, some English, and some Welsh. Well, yeah, I'm related to Jefferson Davis and Mary Queen of Scots. Uh, but yeah, we could be distant cousins. Who knows? Yeah, my uh, my family came from Virginia. And then they were they ended up in Georgia. And then from Georgia ended up in Florida after the Civil War. My family is a Mayflower family. Uh at least one side of it is, and so they uh managed to work their way down the coast to South Carolina. Started off in uh, Massachusetts. Oh no kidding. Yeah, it's kind of hard. My great grandfather was the prosecuting attorney in the Lizzie Borden murder trial. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Lizzie <laughs> Borden took no. gave her mother 40 wax, huh? Yeah, that's the one. When she saw what she'd done, she turned around and gave her mother 41. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I keep saying I'm going to do that Ancestry.com shit and trace it out more, but. Um, you probably got to give them more information than you might be comfortable with. Not to mention paying them. I'm sure it's sometimes, sometimes you find out stuff you don't want to know. <laughs> All right, good night, Charles. He's leaving us. Let me post him a good night message. All right. There you go. Good night, Charles. Is that the one there from Indiana? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you can get a hold of me. Yeah, I think he isn't too far from Newman's. You know, so I don't know who they fly with and stuff, but. You know, it's kind of like us here. We fly in a guy's backyard. Nobody would even know we flew control line unless they asked. Yeah. You know, Samantha and I started doing it. We flew at the park, and it was an hour, hour drive to get there to fly. Well, I just then, I'm uh, two and a half I'm two and a half blocks away. Yeah, right now I'm less I'm about a quarter mile from this guy's house we fly at now. Oh, that's so, cool. That's a lot better than a freaking hour and a half. Yeah, you know that's well, just was, three hours. That's three hours and just traveling time. Let alone, you know, it takes some time to get some flights in. You know. Well, yeah, you and I only stuff. have Samantha half the time. So on the days I'd have her, if the weather was good, we'd load up the car and take off when I got home from work. And I usually get home 4.35 o'clock, drive an hour, get in some flights, drive back home. She got to do homework, all kinds of stuff, get her ready for bed, for school the next day. It was pretty tough. We had to park about, oh, 10 minutes from here. And... It was narrow. We could only fly 60-foot lines. We actually flew 58. Give us a little more room. But they never said we couldn't fly there. But we went back one day, and they planted about 40 trees where we flew. Uh-oh. Really? Man, that yeah. sucks. Well, they didn't, they, they didn't even ask you. They'll say, well, we'll no, of course yeah. not. They knew how to put a stop to that crap. Yeah, we're just going to play with some trees. That way we don't have to deal with them. I just wow, talked to a bad. farmer yesterday uh, to see if he'll take and plow my, the back three acres of my lot flat. So I got my own flying field. 
There you go. That'd be sweet. That'd be yeah. sweet. Uh, that'd well, that's the guy I work with. He's going to be there at the Nats. He's coming down for two days. He's going to fly beginner. And uh, he bought a house here by me, and he got five acres. And uh, yep. we mowed the damn field down. And it's taken yep. us about three years. But, man, we're getting some really good grass in there and stuff like that. It's not 100% flat, yep. but it, the air is just as flat once you're off the ground. So, Yeah. You got a roller? Well, you got a there's actually somebody's put in some it, to me it looks like drainage where drain there's a little bit of in the fields where they roll yeah. and go out back to a creek that's that's about half a mile away and i think yeah. that the farmland at one time pitched that all so it would drain away and back to that creek so yeah they do that a lot at my house too okay and it's not, drain it's not real there. bad. It's not like you, I've landed in it. Everyone else has landed in it, but you can see it, you yeah. know. And the one end of the field is a little bit higher than the other, but it's it's probably within six inches. It ain't it ain't a it ain't a ton. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Chris, where are you from anyway? Where are you driving from? Uh, just west of Port Huron, Port Huron, Michigan. Oh, you live in Port Huron. You ain't too far from us. No, where you at? Grand Rapids. Oh yeah. Hour and a half. Yep. Yep. Pass right by there. Well, almost. You fly <laughs> down there with like with uh, Bob uh, McDonald and stuff. That. No, I I last time I flew, I was a teenager. Oh no shit. Yeah, I'm just all getting back <laughs> into it. He's a beginner, beginner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Retread. That's all right, that man. Be, I got we, the trash bags. You, you get down there, we'll, we'll get you all prepped. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 help, it, just let us know. Yeah, I'll see we'll you be guys close. down there. Yeah, we'll be close in the, in the damn gravel parking lot, so. Yep, there yep. you go. Hey, what, uh, what kind of, I, uh, what kind uh, of airplane are uh, you bringing? What's that? What kind of airplane are you bringing? Uh, just the nobler and that uh, little junior ringmaster. Just to mess around with. I don't even care if I cool. get in a competition or anything. I just want to fly it. You can practice the pattern with that little ringmaster. You yeah. you need to fly beginner. Oh yeah, that's what I told him, Steve. Hell yeah. Hey, I flew beginner. I took sixth place. Samantha says I took last, but I like it better <laughs> saying I took sixth place. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I but I left fun. with like four hundred dollars worth of stuff. What's that? I left with four hundred dollars worth of stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I had kits and engines, and it was crazy. Yep. Yeah, get, I, uh, I got I'd my letters. Again. I'm putting my letters on the plane tomorrow. My AMA number. So, okay. getting all packed up. I'm probably gonna leave like real early Wednesday morning. Get there Thursday. It's supposed to rain Thursday. Yeah, I've been looking be nice. at the weather. It's You're getting there nice. this Thursday? Yeah. Oh, okay. Thursday, yeah, because Sunday is, Sunday is the beginner. Yep. Right. Now, if you get there early enough, there's four campsites there with full hookup, water and sewer. First yep. come, first serve. Yep. Yeah, they're probably already taken, though. I got one twice. Really? Yeah, but it depends when people pull out, when people pull in. Right. Where, where are those sites located? <coughs> it is in the right across from the uh, um, the bathhouse. You'll see how they, they park along both sides of it long ways. And in the very end of it, there's two one or two trailers in there, and that's the people around the campground. And just in from there, when it starts down the long side, is where them four are that the uh, Boy Scouts put in. Oh, okay. What was crazy is they wanted to put in four a year. So they get work for their Eagle Scout badges, and the AMA right. said no. Why? That's what I said. That's, that's I guess they just wanted people to fight over the four. 
made it more yeah, fun right. or something. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to get off here, but I'll see you guys this weekend. Yeah, yep. we'll talk to you because you got to come to the Michigan State Championship. Uh, yeah. Well, con- that's all Utica? Uh, Romulus or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I that's awesome. That yeah, I missed that. That's cool. Yeah, we got Gary Man, it's going to be quiet around here game. with y'all all at the Nats because Sparky's going to be there, Tom's going to be there, Steve's going to be there, Chris is going to be there. I'm going yeah. to have to just yeah. sit here and look at look at my face. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, well, the internet there. They have Wi-Fi at that place, but it don't always yeah, probably be pretty busy Wi-Fi. Yeah, if we could get hooked up but, on Friday, uh, I'll be on it on Friday. Yeah. If it's on Friday, we'll come there and rub it in that you're not here with us. Yeah. Well, Charles Williams said uh, he's going to try to hook up with us on uh, Thursday night when I do this again. In case you missed it, I'm postponing the Friday, or rather, uh, 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 pre-dating the Friday night hangout to Thursday this week because I'm going to the beach this weekend. So Thursday night, if anybody can get in, is when we're going to do it next. All right, cool. Okay. All right, All right. Chris. All right, I'm going to get up to it. Hell, it's midnight. I got to get up and work in the morning. So I yeah. get on the thing. And talk it's to 1 a.m. I'm going to shut the, shut us down now, too, I think. Yeah, I'm sitting here like a bobblehead. I'm just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a good one. Okay, guys. Y'all take it easy. Yep. So take care later. That's watching. Remember to like us on the YouTube channel and uh, uh, join us. We'd love to have you. So. Yep. In the meantime, uh, fair winds, tight lines, y'all fly nets now, and uh, right. and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, good night. Bye.